Hello and welcome fellow Wasteland survivors. I'm Dean. Thanks for stopping in to hang out with me for part four of our Let's Build series here at Hangman's Alley. I'm really excited about today's video because we're going to be doing something that you all know that I love to do and that is create electrical effects in our settlements. So we're going to create this really awesome gun display area. Also we're going to see how we hid the wiring so that it looks nice and clean here and we don't have a bunch of wires hanging all over the place. So there's a lot to do. The video is extremely long. So let's quit the horse relish and get this video started. That one's for you, Bramble. the objects that we're going to need in today's build out and ready to go so that way we can save a little bit of time. The video is already going to be pretty long but I'm going to need that time to better explain how the electrical is going to work for this particular setup. Alright first things first we've got a roll-up garage door out and a carpet in front of it. We're going to use the carpet to group select the door and move it around. Because the ground's uneven here, we're going to need that. If we were at, let's say, like Sanctuary, working on one of the concrete pads, we actually wouldn't need the carpet. But we'll see that in action a little later in the video. Next, I have a wall-mounted switch already up and connected to the roll-up garage door. Now, let's go ahead and move around to the back and see what we've got going on back here. All right, now the first thing to notice is we have a quarter floor sitting out on the ground. On top of it, we have one of the conduit uprights, and it's the barn-sized one. It's only there to help us lift this upright up high enough to snap one of the longer conduits onto the top of it. This way, we have a place to connect a couple of our cycling lights. All right, over on the left-hand side, we've got a barn post out, which is one of the wooden ones. And at the top of it, we've got an electrical junction or connection attached to the top. Next, on the left-hand side of the door, we have one of the letters out, and we have another cycling light connected to the bottom of the letter. Also, on the right-hand side, we have the same thing another letter out and one of the cycling lights attached to the bottom of that. Next we have another barn post out with three electrical connectors attached to it. The one at the bottom is where our main power will come in. These two at the top will be connected to our cycling lights. We have four cycling lights so each one of those will be connected to two of those cycling lights. Next, we have the XOR logic gate. Now, please keep this in mind, ladies and gentlemen. It will become important later on in the video. The XOR logic gate only transmits power if exactly one input has power. Next, we have three alternating switches out. These first two right in front of us are the actual interval switches. Each one of these were programmed at two seconds on, two seconds off. And we really could have programmed them to be anything that we wanted. I just happened to choose the two seconds on, two seconds off. This one in the back is a delayed on switch. It was programmed at two seconds before it becomes active or turns on. It's also connected to one of our interval switches. Alright, now that we've had a close look at all the objects that we're going to use today, let's go into work mode and get ready to hook this hot mess up. First thing we need to do is get rid of a few of these objects we don't need. Remember, they were only here to put this conduit up to attach some cycling lights to. The first thing that we're going to want to do is start with our power where it comes in. So we'll connect that 
to our logic gate. And it remember, it is the XOR logic gate. All right, now the next thing that we're going to want to do is connect it to our wall mounted switch. And we'll have to use the wire glitch to do it because it is passing through the garage door. So now we've got it connected. We can check it to make sure. And yes, we can see both wires are now coming in to our build. The first one's going to the switch right there. The other one is going to our XOR logic gate. Now the XOR logic gate requires two inputs or two power sources. So we'll use the wire glitch once again and connect it to our switch. Even though the power source is the same, the switch is what's giving us our second power input. And now we can see that we have two inputs connected to it. Okay, now that we have our main power connected to the areas that it needs to go to, the next thing we'll want to connect is our logic gate to these two top electrical connectors. If you remember right, I said each one of those are going to run two of our cycling lights. So when the XOR logic gate is active, we're going to want all four of the cycling lights to be on. What we're going to do is we're going to attach each one of these to every other cycling light. So the top one went to the one over on the left, and this one will be here on the right side. But because we can't attach it directly, we're going to need the wire glitch to attach it to that cycling light. So now this top electrical connector is connected to this cycling light over here on the left and the one that's down here on the door on the right hand side. All right, now the bottom electrical connector we want to connect to this cycling light and then we'll run the wire from this cycling light over to this electrical connector. The only reason we're using this electrical connector is to help us hide the wire and keep it up out of the view range when the doors open. Once again, we'll have to use the wire glitch to connect it to this cycling light. And now we have all four of our cycle lights connected up. This one goes to the electrical connector. The electrical connector comes over to this cycling light and then that cycling light attaches to the bottom of this electrical connector. Okay, now at this point we've got quite a bit hooked up. So I'm going to spend a few seconds here and I'm going to look it all over to make sure our wires are connected in the correct spots. Because we use the wire glitch, it is pretty easy to connect the wiring to other objects other than where we wanted it to go. And it's looking like it's connected up pretty good. It looks correct. But to check it and make sure that it's working so far, let's go ahead and connect up to main power. Because only main power is coming into our logic gate, the logic gate should be active and all of our cycling lights are on. And it's working great looks good. I think everything is fine. We've got our main power coming in. It's going up to the logic gate, which remember, will only transmit power if exactly one input has power. All right, I think the next thing to do is go around to the front and turn our switch on, which will give our logic gate a second power. Because of that, the logic gate should go off and all of our cycling lights should turn off as well. And yes, it's working. Because we now have two power inputs to the logic gate, it's no longer transmitting power. Therefore, our cycling lights are off. And we'll turn it back off one more time to close the door. And yes, everything comes back on and it seems to be working great. As we're going, we're going to check this a couple of different times to make sure what we're doing is working and working correctly. Now, let's go ahead, disconnect our power so we can hook up the next objects. 
Now the effect I'd like to achieve here is when our garage door is open and our XOR logic gate is no longer sending power, I would like these interval switches to kick in and start sending power to our cycling lights. I would like two of the lights to be on and two of the lights to be off, and they would alternate back and forth. Now we don't actually need a logic gate to achieve this type of effect, but what I'd like to do is show you that you could use a logic gate if you'd like to, and we're going to use the AND logic gate. The AND logic gate transmits power if both inputs have power. So we'll go ahead, we'll attach it to the bottom of our XOR logic gate, and now we'll go ahead and hook it up. The first thing we're going to want to do is hook it to main power. Once again, we're going to want to hook it to our switch for our second power source. That way, when this switch is on, then it's now receiving two different powers, and it will become active. So we're just looking to make sure our wires are connected correctly, and they look good to me. Since we have so many wiring wires, you know, starting to accumulate here, it's extremely important to make sure that we're getting them in the right spots. Okay, looks good. Now, once again, let's go ahead, hook it up to power, and make sure that this part or this logic gate is working correctly. Once we connect it to power, of course, the XOR is on. And now when we switch the switch on, where the door comes open, we can see the XOR, which is at the top, is off, but the AND logic gate is now active. And therefore, we are transmitting power. So let's turn our switch off. And now we can see the top one, the XOR, is now transmitting power but the AND logic gate is not. The reason is, is because we lost one of our electrical inputs. Now we can go ahead and connect our output to the AND logic gate up to our interval switches that we want to come on when the door is open. And we'll connect one to the delayed ON switch, which is in the background, and we'll connect one to the interval switch. Once again, let's check it and make sure it's working. The door comes open and the interv interval switches are working just great. And we can see from our logic gates up on top, everything's working great. We don't have any lights on because they're not hooked up yet. And then when we turn off or close the door, then our AND logic gate goes off and our interval switches are no longer receiving power. Now the only thing left to do is to go ahead and connect our interval switches up to our electrical connectors. So we'll connect one of the alternating switches up and then the second one will be connected to the top. Okay, now once again, let's go ahead and test it to see if it's working. We are in the off position, or the door is closed, therefore all of the cycling lights are on. Now when we switch on, the, the, or turn the switch on, then the door opens and our interval switches now take over. And we can see that two lights are blinking, two lights are off. Now it's out of sequence, and the reason is, is because we did hook our interval switches up while it had power. So let's shut our generator off. Let's reset it so that way the interval switches reset at the same time intervals. And now we'll see if it's working correctly. And it is. <clears throat> Excuse me. We can see two of the uh, cycling lights are on, two are off. The other two are on while the other two go off. Now let's go ahead, close our door, which turns our AND logic gate off, and all four cycling lights now come on. 
this is working excellent. I'm extremely happy with it and it should give us a great effect. So the only thing left to do now is color our lights. Let's go ahead and look at this real quick in the dark with no Pip-Boy light on and see how it's working. Now we are going to get a little bit of a glow from our cycle lights, but not as much as we're going to get when we get it up against a wall. But we can see that the cycle lights are cycling back and forth. Two are on, two are off, two are on, the other two are off. Now let's go ahead and close our door and see what it looks like. Okay, now that our door is closed, all four cycling lights are on and we have the solid glow effect all the time. Once again, we'll open the door back up, our interval switches kick in, and our cycling lights start to cycle. Alright, now we're almost ready to go ahead and put this into our build, but first we have a few objects that we need to slide together. This is why we have the carpet in front of the garage door to group select it. We can move it around to a more level position on each side to align these posts up to it. The reason that we need to do this is so that the top of the post is even with the top of the door. If we would have left it in an uneven area, that post could be a little higher or a little lower on both sides. And since we like perfection, that's why we're doing it like this. And we can see now both of our posts are about the same height as our door. Okay, now we are ready to move it over into our build. So I've added a few more carpets onto our interval switches and placed it in front of the build so that we can take everything with us together at the same time when we group select this. We're going to use a concrete foundation, slide it up against the carpet, and then group select it to lift it up into the air. If you remember from a previous video, we've done this to help us get it up higher, quicker, without a whole bunch of groups selecting the concrete pillars and so on. Now I've speeded this up a little bit so that we could still see what I've done here. And I'll try to explain it as we go. We've lifted a conduit up into the air yes. with a concrete pillar. We're also placing a metal post out to group select it but it's a little bit too low so I need to lift it up a little bit to get a hold of it now that we've got the metal post and the conduit together I'm gonna place it in this pile of dirt so that way we can get it up a little bit higher quicker and easier now this is the tricky part getting this into an area where we can group select the whole thing and apply it to our build we no longer need the carpet so I've stored that and we're bringing it over to where we're gonna place it I'm sinking it into the ground to make sure that it's up high or not too high to place it in there and we actually had to send it back to readjust it again Everything looks good, so I'm going to place it in an area where I can drop it, and when we go to group select it again, we don't group select more of our build. Quick saving at this time would probably be a good idea. Now, we can go ahead and hook it up to our main power, so that way when we put it in, everything is connected. Now this took a little bit of time getting the concrete pillar over on the left hand side in just the right area where I could see most of the door and still make the concrete pillar turn green. If I can't make it turn green we wouldn't be able to put it down because it's out of our sight or our view of sight. Now I'm using the wall to line up the garage door and once I've gotten it lined up the best I think I can I'll move it forward to about where I think it needs to be and we'll go ahead and place it down and then we'll see how close that we got it. First thing I'll do is check the sides to make sure 
that we're far enough away or not too close. What we don't want to do is put our gun racks on the wall and our garage door is too close and when we close it the weapons show through the door. This is why we're using the wooden posts to give us that little bit of a gap from the wall to the garage door. Looks good. I think it'll work. Now we'll go ahead, go into work mode, grab our um, alternating switches, which are on carpets, and we'll insert it into the wall. This way, if we ever needed to work on it, it would be extremely easy to grab this carpet, pull it out, and do the work that we need to do. Now, I have gotten high enough in level that we can create the laser trip wires. So I've actually taken our first build apart and put in laser trip wires instead of the pressure plates. So we're inserting our electrical conduits back in the ground. Also, we've carpeted our generator and we've put the generator inside of the wall as well to hide it. Now, we'll just put some gun racks up, go chase down some weapons, put them up, and we'll see how it looks. Now, we've already seen this part in the end of the last video and the beginning of this video. But, you know, we're going to take a little bit longer look here to see just how nice this really looks. We can see the glow of the cycling lights on the back walls and it just really gives it a nice look and a nice effect. Plus, while the door is closed, we don't have the lights cycling back and forth like they're doing right now. This is probably overkill, but, you know, what else are we going to do in Fallout 4? We've played it so much, why not have a little bit of fun? Alright everybody, that is the end of today's video. Sorry it took so long, but I really wanted to explain how the electrical worked for that setup. This is a clip for our next video. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding the lighting in to this area. I'll show how we put those lamps in behind the Nuka-Cola mixing machines. Also, how we put some of these lamps in on the posts that are by our living quarters. And you can kind of see them over there on the left-hand side. Also, we'll see how we attached cycling lights to the back of our magazine racks and how we hid all of the wiring in the walls as well. Okay, everybody, thank you all very much for coming, hanging out with me today. I really do appreciate it. And just like always, until next time, please stay safe and peace.